Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at a particular application of the kinematics equations for constant acceleration. It turns out that the acceleration that an object falling under the force of gravity has will be constant. And because we deal with gravity so much in physics, that constant value is given its own special name, little g. But anyway, looking at objects that are subjected to gravity and how they accelerate and how they move, that's going to be a great example for us of how to apply the kinematics equations. Now this idea that the acceleration due to gravity is constant, that's actually not obvious. In fact, we've talked about some of Aristotle's erroneous views on motion, and one of his big mistakes had to be with his description of how bodies fall. And he basically said, if I've got two balls of equal size, but unequal masses, so I've got a light ball and I've got a heavy ball, and I drop them from the same time at the same height, Aristotle said the force of gravity is pulling down harder on the heavy ball, so he said that we would expect the heavier ball to fall and hit the ground first, that the heavier ball is being pulled down harder, it should fall faster and hit the ground first. It turns out that's not true. If gravity is the only force acting on an object, two balls of the same size dropped from the same height at the same time will hit the ground simultaneously every single time. And we're going to learn why that is later, but for now, we just have to accept that that's an experimental fact, that if you drop two balls of the same size from the same height at the same time, they're going to hit the ground at the same time. That's because every object dropped near the surface of the Earth accelerates at the same rate. So let's sum up. The acceleration due to gravity near the surface of the Earth is approximately constant. And the acceleration due to gravity is represented by the letter little g. And it has a magnitude of 9.81 meters per second squared. That's in the metric system, the MKS system. Uh, and it has a value of 32.2 feet per second squared in the imperial system. You know, the one that uses miles and feet and all of that. And so um, we're going to be predominantly using the MKS system. And so that value of 9.81 meters per second squared, that's one that you're going to want to memorize. But don't worry, you're going to see it so much you won't be able to not memorize it even if you tried. So um, just the last point I want to make is that the direction is always towards the center of the Earth. But in practical terms, that just means towards the ground. So we have a vector. It's an acceleration vector. It's the acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. And let's remind ourselves what that means. If I drop an object, after one second, its speed is going to have changed, and it'll go from zero velocity to 9.81 meters per second. The next second is going to have another 9.8 seconds. So that would be... 19.6-something, uh, 19.62 or whatever. And so every tick of the clock, it's going to gain an additional 9.81 meters per second in velocity. That's what acceleration means. So let's look at some examples. An object, initially at rest, is dropped from rest at a height of 10.0 meters. Let's assume that air resistance is negligible and that gravity is the only force acting on the object. The question is then, how long does it take to hit the ground? Now, we can analyze this motion based on what we already know. Since the acceleration due to gravity is constant, little g equals 9.81 meters per second squared, we can use the kinematics equations. Now, one thing that I want to mention. Some of you may have had physics in high school, and you may have learned that g is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. That's actually not correct. Little g is always positive. It is positive 9.81 meters per second squared. But the direction is always downward. And so that's why sometimes people see the minus sign. Because remember, when a vector is upside down, it gets a minus sign. But we'll see how to apply that in a, in a little bit. But just keep in mind, when you're talking about g by itself, it's going to be a positive value. 9.81 meters per second squared. Then you can later on talk about its direction, and it'll be positive or negative depending on your coordinate system. Okay, so in this example, we have an object that's dropped from rest, 
and it's going to fall to the ground, and we want to find how long does it take to hit the ground. So let's look at what we have. So I've drawn a picture, and I've put my coordinate system where the object starts from. So it's released from rest up here. It's going to fall down, and it's going to hit the ground. What do we know? We know that the object was released from rest, so that means its initial velocity is zero. We know that its acceleration is equal to minus g, or minus 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, what's this minus business? Where does that come from? Because I was just talking about that. Let's look at the little box up here. We have our acceleration vector. We know that the acceleration is going to be pointing downward. If I drop this object, it's going to go faster and faster towards the ground. And so the acceleration has a value of little g, which is at 9.8, and it's in the minus y hat direction because I've defined y going up as positive with my choice of coordinate system. So that minus sign can mathematically just move in front, and I get that the acceleration in the y direction, a y, is equal to minus g y hat. And so that gives me the magnitude, and then the minus y hat gives me the direction. And so, just mathematically, it looks nicer to pull that minus sign out front. And so that's why people get confused and they think that g is negative. What's really negative is the acceleration. Because I chose to make my coordinate system have y point upwards, and the acceleration points downwards, we know that opposite direction means there's a minus sign in there. So, the long and short of it is, my a is going to be minus 9.81 meters per second squared, or 9.81 meters per second squared downward. Now, my initial position, why not, is zero. Why? Because I put my coordinate system there. I chose to make it zero. And so since the ground is 10 meters below that, that means my final position, when it hits the ground, that's going to be minus 10 meters. Now, if I wanted to, I could have put my coordinate system on the ground, and that would have made my final position zero, but then my initial position up above the ground would be positive 10. You could do it either way. So the initial is zero and the final is minus 10, or you could make the, emission, the initial 10 and the final zero. The equation over here, they're going to be the same. They're gonna, it doesn't matter which way you choose. So I've drawn my picture. I've listed out what I know from the problem. And I've written down over here my three kinematics equations. Now all I've got to do is figure out which of these equations do I need. It's not going to be this one because we're looking for a time. How long does it take to hit the ground? That's a time. This equation, this third equation, doesn't even have a time. The first equation, well, it's got a time in it, but we don't know the time or the final velocity. It's not given in the problem what the velocity it is when it hits the ground. Anytime you have two unknowns in an equation, you can't solve it with just that equation. So that leaves this equation. So let's hope that it works. We know y, y naught, v naught, a. We know everything but the time. So this is the equation that we want to use to solve this problem. We'll plug in all the numbers we know and solve for the time. And so here we're doing just that. I've got y is y naught plus v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. We've got minus 10 meters is my final y, 0 meters is my initial y, 0 meters per second is my initial velocity because it's dropped from rest, and then I've got minus gt squared, that's the only term that's left. That leaves me, when I cut out the things that are 0, minus 10 equals minus 1 half 9.81 meters per second squared, that's the little g, t squared. Now, obviously those minus signs are going to cancel, and I can multiply this all out and substitute everything in and solve for t. And so the rest of this algebra is just solving for t, and I find that t is equal to 1.43 seconds. Now, I would encourage you to do this on your own, make sure that, that it makes sense to you, but that's a very simple problem that will let us find what the time is. And so that's our answer. Now, I'd like to rework that problem, the same problem, but I'm going to do it with an alternate method. My alternate method is right here with the coordinate system. Here, what I, all that I've changed is I've made my y point down. So down to the ground is now what I'm calling the positive direction. 
that means my acceleration is no longer negative. My g is my acceleration is g times y hat, positive y hat, because little g is pointing downwards along with the acceleration. So my little g right here at the top is pointing down. Positive y is pointing down. So that means my a is in the positive y direction. Again, my y naught now is 0, but my y final is positive 10 because here's my 0, positive is this way, my final is positive 10. So this is exactly like what I had before, only all the, po all the negative signs have been eliminated. That's why you might like to turn your coordinate system upside down like this. In a problem like this, it gets rid of minus signs. Now, in the other version of the problem, those minus signs canceled in the end. Here, we're just canceling them out in the beginning by choosing a coordinate system that makes them go away. But I plug all these numbers in. I get 10 meters is equal to positive 1 half gt squared, and I end up with the same answer. It's that easy.